Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and it's early morning. I'm recording this before work because uh, I've had a very busy week and it's taken me a while to put this together. This is the video where we're aiming to finish in the top 5% globally, which if you're in a mini league will hopefully mean you'll finish very near the top, possibly even actually at the top. Game week 22 was low scoring for most players, but there are one or two key players that did quite well, which means hopefully your team did quite well. So I'm going to start by looking at what happened in game week 22 and then what the recommendations are for game week 23. So the first thing I did this week was look at all the teams that I'm aware of that are following this system and there's three or four I know are religiously following it and then there's another, maybe more than that, maybe five, and there's another four or five that are following it but they're also putting their own players in there which is fine. So what I've done, I've gone through and I've removed players that I found out that basically no one has so they don't have to keep showing them every week so this makes the rest of the video slightly cleaner and easier and quicker so I'm going to show you the players I've removed if it happens you've still got some of these in your team that's fine as we go through the next week or two you may be wanting to remove them because everyone else has removed them it's up to you but going forward if you've been strictly following this and then I've looked at your team because you posted it one time uh, these players are no longer in there so removed from the system are James from Chelsea, Akanja, Luca Dean, Dallo, Sun, Mount, Barnes, Foden, Trossard, Rodrigo, Billing, Solanke. Now to be fair, some teams did take these players out game week 21 for game week 2, so they have only just left. For example, we looked at uh, celebrating victory Sarah Jane's team last week and she had Trossard, she removed Trossard. As it happened, she made three transfers, and those three transfers got a huge amount of points. She got over 100 this week, so that was nice. So uh, that's the players removed. Now, bankers, I think we had four or five bankers before, but again, looking at the teams, there are eight players that currently everyone has. These are Ward, Bueno, Trippier, Shaw, Andreas, Rashford, Martinelli, Haaland. Ward, Bueno, and Andreas all started on the bench. So Trippier scored 2, Shaw 6, Rashford 20, Martinelli 1, Haaland 2. Rashford was the captain though, and a lot of you triple captained him. So Rashford either got 40 or 60 points, and he's the player that really saved the week. So on your with your bankers, depending whether or not you triple captained or not, you would have got at least 51 points. The average was 61, the maximum was 71. What am I saying? Oh, average. Of course, no one got average, but I always show the average because... That's between the uh, triple captainers and non-triple captainers. As it happens, most people it looks like uh, who follow the system did put the triple captain on Rashford. So goalkeeper, you'd have had one of Edison, Pope, Ramsdale, Kepa. And they scored 1, 2, 3 and 10, which is an average of 4. You'd have had two of these defenders, Stones, Gabriel, White and Castagne. And if you saw last week's video, you'd have seen there were loads of defenders in the on this page. But in actual fact, there's only four. And everyone's got two of these, basically everyone. Stones didn't play. Gabriel two, White two, Castagna zero. So they averaged three, given that you had two of these. You'd have had one of these midfielders, Salah, De Bruyne, Fernandez. They scored two, one and twelve, which is an average of five. You'd have had one of these midfielders, Saka, Odegaard, Mitoma and Olmeron. They scored 2-2-11-2, two, two, an average of 4.3. And forwards, you'd have had two of these, Kane, Darwin, Anketia, Mitrovic, Tony, Martial, Nonzo. And they scored 8-2-2-2-1, two, 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 nothing, didn't play, and 9. So that was an average of 8. And then on the bench, some of these may have come in for you. The common ones on the bench, the teams I looked at were Bailey, Andreas, Bueno and Somerville, who scored 2-2-5. Two, two, so the global average was 48. As you would have seen from that, most players seemed to get one or two points. And that was it. There was only a very small handful that actually did very well. But a lot of teams tended to have some of those. For example, Rashford. So they did all right. If you've been following the system, the worst you'd have got was 60 points. The average was 85 and a half. 
the maximum was 125. So the teams I looked at that I could look at, like I said, Sarah Jane got over 100 points. Then I saw other teams that got 80s and 90s. The worst one I found only got 60-something points. Um, but that happened. I guess it's a spread of results. We still can easily get in the top 5%. We're coming up to game weeks where there are lots of double game weeks and blanks. Double means some teams play more than once in the game week. Blank means some teams aren't playing at all. These are the game weeks where we make, hopefully, quite big gains in the ranking systems. Uh, so it's really important we get these teams right. And we're not about to wildcard. We're not about to use the free hit. That's going to come in several weeks' time. 482 subscribers last time I looked. Thank you very much for that. If you like this sort of stuff, please do like and comment and subscribe if you're not already. If your team doesn't exactly follow this and you want a bit of help, leave it in the comment what it is. The best way is to give me the ID of your team. It's in the URL when you look at your team. And I will try and comment before the deadline and say what moves I would do if I was in your position. You don't have to do that, but you can if you want to. I'm perfectly happy to look at that. With only a few people leaving comments, I should have time to get through them all all right. So transfer thoughts for game weeks 23, 24, 25. The next three game weeks, most teams have got three games. However, Arsenal have got five games in the next three game weeks. So this coming game week, they're home to Brentford and home to Man City. Then they're away to Villa. Then they're away to Leicester and home to Everton. So you have to have five Arsenal players in your team. Even if it's going to cost you hits, even if it costs you three hits, but none of you should be in that position, get in three Arsenal players. And we're going to look at that. Now, this week, they're playing two teams at home, Brentford and Man City. And playing at home does give you a big advantage. So they may do very, very well. However, Brentford and Man City have two of the best defences in the league. So it is plausible they're both going to be nil-nils. It's also plausible they're both going to be actually just low-scoring games. But who knows? Maybe... Arsenal are going to get a huge score in one of those. But I wouldn't be surprised if it is low scoring. So Arsenal players are a buy for us. We want to be getting those in. Man City have got four games in the next three game weeks. And they're playing twice this week. So we want to be targeting Man City players. We don't have to get in three. Uh, if we only get two, that's fine. If you get three, that's okay as well, by the way. We want to, we want to get at least two really for Man City though. Everton have got four. Their next one is away to Liverpool. It's obviously a local derby. Derbies often don't go exactly to form. Liverpool are playing awful at the moment. Everton, new manager bounce with Sean Dice. They might be doing very well. So that result really could go anywhere. If it's 0-0, Liverpool win 3-0, Everton win 3-0, any result isn't really going to be a surprise. So I've put by, but that's because... Game week 24 and 25, then nice for Everton. But if you had to play an Everton player this week, it's not the end of the world. Liverpool, we want to be getting some of those. And they've got four games the next three weeks. Wolves, again, we might want to get one of their players in. I know we have Bueno, but he was on the bench last time. And if he remains on the bench, he's going to be out. And there are three teams, Brentford, Brighton, Man United, Newcastle. They're all playing twice in the next three game weeks which is a huge difference from Arsenal, of course. We're playing five. We've only got three players on our bench, apart from the goalkeeper. So we want to aim to have a maximum of three players by the time we reach, reach 25 from the teams Brentford, Brighton, Man United, Newcastle. Now I'm thinking we're all going to want to keep hold of Trippier if we've got him, which we have. We're all going to want to keep hold of Rashford, which only leaves one other space for somebody like who you might have, Bernan, uh, Fernandez, Shaw, you might have Matoma, Brentford, you'd have Tony, Newcastle, you might have Pope. Now, we don't have to get it down to three, but it's going to help us a lot if we can get it down to three. But we don't need to do it yet. We've got two game weeks where we can get it down to three players. Hopefully it makes sense. By the time you get to this vid end of this video, you'll have a good idea what you need to do. Don't worry if you didn't understand all that. I'm just trying to show you my thought process and what I'm allowing for when I'm making these selections. We also know we will have double game weeks coming up after game week 25 and blank game weeks, but we don't know all the details to that yet. So transfers in. These are your top transfer targets. If you've already got them, that's great, but it's Odegaard, Mares, Enketia, Gabriel, Ake, Kilman, 
Tarkovsky. Obviously not getting all of these in. Because it's a double game week, it's absolutely fine to take a hit. So if you make two transfers and it costs you four points, that is absolutely fine. If your team's a bit of a mess and you have to make three and it costs you eight points, that's all right. You make a judgment call for yourself, but that's probably going to be all right. The last two, Kilmer and Tarkovsky, don't take a hit to get those in unless you're removing a player that's definitely not going to play, in which case you may as well have them sitting on your bench because there's a good chance you might want to make transfers next week. But the ones at the top, the higher they are in this list, the more of a target they are for you. All those we want to bring in, not all of those, they're the ones we're aiming at. The players we're happy to get rid of, Stones looks like he's not going to be playing. Martial, he didn't play at all. Now, I did say last week about getting rid of Martial, but I found at least one team that's following the system that, because of the moves they make, still had Martial. Almiron, Somerville, Castagne, Shaw, Tony. They're the ones we're happy to get rid of. So potential transfers are, if you have Almiron or Somerville, move them on and get either Odegaard or Mares. If you happen to have Almiron and Somerville and want to get in both Odegaard and Mares, that's fine. Remember, you can only have three Arsenal players. You can only have three Man City. So if you already have three Arsenal players, I suggest you don't swap any of them out to get Odegaard. For example, if you've got Martinelli, don't sell him to get Odegaard. That's fine. I'm also aware there's a big price difference between Armand Somerville and Odegaard Mares. But if you've been following this system, the chances are you've got three, four, five million in the bank. So this move you should be able to do. So that's the midfield place. For the forward, if you have Martial or Tony, you can get rid of them and you can get an Enketia. But Tony does have uh, two games left before his blank, so you don't have to do that. If this was, if it was my team and I had Tony and I didn't have Enketia and I only had two Arsenal players, I'd be right to take a hit for that. Tony is away to Arsenal this week. Arsenal defensively are a very good team. The defenders, we had Stones, Castagna and Shaw. If you've got any of those three, it's fine to get rid of those to bring in one of Gabriel Ake, or if it doesn't cost you a hit, Kilman Tarkovsky. And again, if you wanted, if you had two of Stones, Castagna, Shaw, and you wanted to bring in Gabriel and Ake, that's fine. So guilt-free, you can make two transfers, three if you really, really need to. Don't make a transfer if you don't need to, that's fine. If you end this week or go into this game week 23 with three Arsenal and two Man City, you're in a good position. I know I've not listed all the Arsenal Man City players in our system. Some people have still got De Bruyne. Personally, I wouldn't get rid of him. I wouldn't get rid of him for Odegaard, for example. I would just, I would just hold him for this week. But if you want to, that's fine. Right, so on the bench, the way the bench works, I tell you which players to put on the bench and the other 11 players that actually play sort themselves out. So... Put Ward on the bench. Now, because the teams are now so diverse, I've had a look at them, and I'm now going to list 15 players. <laughs> now, hopefully in the first eight or nine, you've got three of them until your bench is full. But if you haven't, I've just gone through, and hopefully by the end of this, I've listed at least three players you've got. The first player you see takes position number three on your bench. The second player you see that you've got takes position number two. And the last player you see takes position number one. And there are some good players in here. So it's a bit sad that you're going to be putting potentially good players on your bench. But it's a double game week. And we have to get those Arsenal and Man City players out there playing. So Stones, if you still have him for whatever reason, after all that transfer talk, he's the first position. and He's number three position on your bench. Then we have Martial. Hopefully you've got rid of those two now. Bueno, Tarkovsky. Castagne, Kilman, Somerville, Nonto, Shaw, Andreas, Almiron, Tony, Bailey, Darwin, Mitrovic. So as you'll see from that, you may be umming and ahhing about, for example, getting rid of Tony or Shaw, but it may be by the time you get to this video, you didn't get rid of them and you find out they're on your bench, in which case you may want to get rid of them and then your team shuffles around a bit. Hopefully that all made sense. I'm sorry it's so complex. <laughs> so captain, Harland's got a double game week. That means that Harland is our captain this week. There's the old mule hat. If you've still got your triple captain chip, it's all right to play it this week. Personally, I might hold on to it if I still had it and play it in a couple of game weeks time or later on. 
but it's absolutely fine to play it. I'll assume people aren't going to play it when I do the scoring next week, but if you want to play it, that's fine. Regarding the vice captain, the first one of these players that you see that you have, make them your vice captain. So if you've got De Bruyne, he gets the old mule hat. If you have Mares and don't have De Bruyne, he gets your mule hat. If you have neither of those, then Saka's your vice captain. If you have none of those, Odegaard's your vice captain. If you have none of those, and Ketty is your vice captain. And if you have none of those players, then Martinelli would be your vice captain. Hopefully that made sense and hopefully you had a good game week. I know a lot of us did have good game weeks. A lot of us did get green arrows. Um, and all the best for game week 23. If you want to let me see your team, that's fine. If you want to say, look, I'm following you, but I don't need any advice, that's great. Give me your number down below or the name if you're in my league. Do join the league. That'd be really good. Uh, or if you're you've just come across this video and you want some advice I'll try to make sure I look at the comments before the deadline and tell you what I would do in your position thank you very much for watching bye I'll start again that was, that was all rubbish <laughs>